I'm going to show you how to decorate this blouse in these five embroidery stitches. So I'm going to use this design. This is free for you to download from our website as a PDF. So I'll put a link to that below um, in the description below and you can go over there, print that off and you've got your design ready to put um, onto your fabric. And I'm going to use this blouse. Um, I have to have this in my wardrobe and thought it would look nice with a bit of decoration on it, but you can stitch on anything you want to, you can do on clothes or just some ordinary fabric if you want to. So to transfer my design onto my blouse, I'm going to use um, this pen here. This is an Aquatrick marker. Um, the beauty of this is it disappears when you wet something. Um, so you can put it on um, and see your design to stitch and then when you wash it or just spray it with water, it disappears. If you haven't got one of those, don't worry, because you can either use a pencil, um, use one with quite a hard lead in it so you don't smudge it everywhere. Um, and don't use it, a pencil with very light threads because it can come off on the thread. Or you can use a permanent pen, marker pen. This is a drawing pen, it's a very fine one, um, but it's permanent ink so it won't come off at all. So either one of those is fine. So I've got my shirt that I've laid out on the surface, on a flat surface here. Um, give it a good iron first um, so you can see clearly where you're going to put your design. And I'm just going to slide that underneath in position. Take a little bit of time just to do this accurately because there's nothing worse than spending all that time stitching and finding is in the wrong place. Just going to check my frame fits over the top, which it does. And I'm just going to trace through very carefully with my pen. Make sure you do this part as accurately as possible because this will affect the rest of the project. So take your time to do this as neatly as you can. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And then you can frame this ready for stitching. So. This is the frame that I'm using, so I'm just going to slide the inside hoop underneath, make sure that butterfly's in the middle. The outer one goes over the top. Just give that a tighten. And he's ready for stitching. So the download sheet gives you um, all the information that you need. So it's got the stitches and where I'm going to put the stitches. And it's also got the thread colours that I've used and the equipment you'll need. So you can refer to that to help you um, with the next part. So I'm going to use these five stitches. So I showed you these in part two. If you haven't seen that part, you can see that up here. Um, and that explains all of these stitches. And I'm going to use these lovely threads here. So these are Lana threads. Um, they're really beautiful and soft to use. Um, they come in gorgeous colours and they are machine washable and I'm working on, um, on a blouse that I'm going to wear so this will wash nice and easily. If you're going to stitch on clothing just make sure you check your threads and make sure that they are um, colour fast because you don't want them running all over your lovely clothes. So do just check that on the label first. Um, the other thing that I have is needles, so I'm going to use crawl number seven needles throughout this whole project. So let's get stitching. So my first stitch is the back stitch and I'm going to work that down the antenna here. So I put a knot in the end of my thread and I'll just show you how to start your stitches off. So. I'm just going to put my knot right out of the way down here in the body of the butterfly and I'm going to work just a little stitch straight up and straight back down very close together. That's just a little stab stitch and just a couple up the antenna here. I'll do one more and I'm going to start at the end and work down towards 
the body just because that's the easiest way to start and finish my stitches otherwise I get to the end and I've got to somehow finish my thread so right up on the end actually just in from the end we're doing back stitch for this so we're going to go back on ourselves each time straight down on the end so come up just ahead of yourself and down so it meets the previous stitch and back on myself in the back stitch try and stay nice and close to the line that you've drawn make sure that gets covered I'm just going to work all the way down this shape So I'm coming to the end now, so I've just um, taken my back stitches right over those two starting stitches, just cover those up, you won't see those, there's the last one, and then to finish that thread I'm just going to do again two small stitches in this body, I'm going to fill this area in here completely, so I know that I'm good to finish off the stitches there. If you're not sure, just finish them on one of your design lines because you know that line will always get covered. So if you're not sure, just start and finish on a line. So I've done three stitches, back to the top, and then I can cut that thread and I can cut my knot off. It's nice and smooth on the front and nice and smooth on the back. So we've done our first stitch. Right, let's move on to the upper. Actually, no, we'll do the lower the lower wing first. The reason I'm going to do the lower one is it actually goes behind the upper one so we'll work from the back towards the front so we'll do the elements that are behind first. So I'm going to start in the same way. Now this is a little bit open this area so I'm putting my knot on the edge and I'm going to do my two starting stitches on this line here near to where I'm going to start. So I'm going to start there so I'll do my stitches close by so I don't get long threads on the back. I'm going to work a stem stitch for this one. So a little forward stitch now. Now my loop is going to come over to this side to the left because I'm working downwards. So it will be to the left. Just keep the loop to the same side, don't worry if you're not sure which side just keep it to the same side little forward stitch make my loop loops always to the same side come up at the end of that previous stitch which is in the middle of those two points and then we can just work around that shape there's some tight bends on this wing so just shorten your stitches a little bit to get around the tight curves I'm just coming to the end of this row of stem stitch. You'll notice that as I've gone round the shape, my loop is still staying to the same side of the stitching. So when I started, it was to the left. Now it's to my right, but it's still to the left of the stitching. So that loop always stays to the inside of the shape. Don't change it halfway or you get a different stitch. I'm just coming to the end there so the last stitch is there and then to finish that thread my two small stitches on this line here because these wings are going to be quite open but I know that line will get covered so two stitches back to the top and then I'm just going to cut that thread cut my knot off as well so it's all nice and neat and tidy Okay, so I'm going to work on the upper wing now. I'm just working one half of the butterfly so you can see how it all comes together together because the other side is exactly the same. So, um, but if you want to work both lower wings together and both upper wings together, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to go around the top now and we're going to go into our chain stitch now. So I'm going to start here and work around the butterfly wing that way. So 
because I'm starting at the top here, I can do my two starting stitches inside this shape because I know that will be covered up. I'm going to start right in that corner there. So this is a chain stitch, so back down the same hole and up inside the loop. Tension it in the direction that you're going. Try and keep each chain the same length and at the same tension so they all look the same. Okay, if your thread's getting a little bit short and you need to change it, just finish your stitch off. So with chain stitch, I just need to take my needle down the other side of the chain just to finish it off. Do your two little finishing stitches. One, two, come back to the top, cut your thread off and your starting knot. Thread yourself another thread, not in the end. Now I'm starting down here, so I just put my knot out of the way on a design line there. Work my two holding stitches along the bottom of this wing towards where I want to start. Just going to put one more in to get me around the curve. And then to carry on with the chain, I'm going to come back inside that previous stitch. So it looks like I'm just now carrying on from where I finished. Right, one more stitch just to get me back to the body. And again, just to finish the chain stitch down the other side of the chain to secure that one. And then my two stitches. Okay, so stitch number four is going to be eyelets and it's going to be in this upper wing here. I'm going to do that in the pink thread. Now we're going to do these quite randomly. So I suggest if you start in the tip of the wing and where you finish your first stitch is where the hole will be for that whole stitch. So you're defined where you go now by the edge of the shape. So don't go outside the shape, but work your way around in a circular direction, just coming up on the edge. You'll see the eyelet shape start to come as we open up a little bit. have to continue the shape but within the confines of the shape that you're stitching so still doing an eyelet but just stopping when I get to the edge of that wing shape. Now this is going to have an outline around it so I'm filling in first and then we'll go around the edge afterwards to just neaten it up and make it a solid shape. So there's the first eyelet and then to come just put some random ones in now not too worried about where they are I'm just going to fill in that shape so I'm going to go around the other way now just so I can come around and meet this one and then make some decisions about where I put the stitches now I've got a little space down here so I'm just going to put half of one in so my hole for the center is going to be right on that line and I'm just going to put the top half in you can cross over your other stitches it's absolutely fine 
Now I can't go all the way around because I'm only doing half for one, so it's going to fill in this side. And then I think we'll get a big one in here, right in the middle. So there's the center. That one can go in between there. No right or wrong with these, which is great. And that's finishing off really pretty stitch fills in really quickly and then to finish there's a little space on the edge there to do my two finishing stitches remember this is having an outline around it so these will get covered when we do the outline back to the top and that's my eyelet stitch so let's have a look at the lower wing so this area here so we're going to go back and do a little bit of the back stitch so the first stitch that we did now i'm going to put my knot over there and start in this shape now i'm going to fill in this shape so i'm just going to put my two starting stitches inside that shape i'm going to come up to the point if you've got a nice point on something try and keep it a nice point so i'm going to start there and then small back stitches for this all the way around this shape it's coming back to the point now if you come out of the same hole you should get that nice fine point on the end just finish my stitch inside the shape so very simple back stitch outline and I'm going to fill in just the circle area here with some French knots so this is a great place to do French knots if you want to fill in an area now just so I can make that circle shape I'm actually going to work my knots over that line and around that shape and then I'll fill in so I'm going to start here and do knots in a row around there to make the circle then I'll just fill this area so thread over the needle back needles going down on that line Pull it tight. That's my first one. Just work a row of them around the top of this circle. Put them nice and close together. Join them up with the other side so that finishes the circle off. And now you can just start filling in. Now I suggest you don't jump around the shape, fill in starting from the top and work your way down. So work away from the knot and take your needle down towards the previous knot and you should be able to get them nice and close together. So just bring the needle up away wrap the needle and the needle goes back down close to these other knots so you get them nice and tightly packed in together and then just fill in the whole shape now if you're feeling a bit braver and you want to have a go at two colors you can just start a second thread you notice I've left the one that I'm using on the top. If you leave it underneath, it gets in a big knotty mess and all sorts of terrible things happen. So just park it on the top and started my second colour and I'm just going to do some darker ones in the middle here just to add a bit of interest. It's not difficult to do, I'm doing exactly the same stitch, just changed colour. 
just adds another dimension to it. You can see how I'm covering up my other starting stitches as well now by packing these in really solidly. Okay, last knot. Now, to finish my thread on this one, I've kind of run out of spaces. So you can do one of two things. You can either turn your embroidery over and you can just slide your needle under some stitches on the back a couple of times back and forth just to secure the end and then cut it off. Or if you're careful, you can just find a space between your stitches and do your two knots on the top. So there's one just coming between those French knots two and I'm doing it this way because I've got my hoop on a stand so that I can film it for you and it's easier for me to do that than it is to turn it over so that's my French knots and my back stitch done so we've just done our French knot so if you remember following on from French knots we can do a pistol stitch so it's the same knot but with a long stem on it so we're going to do some of that in the upper wing here so I'll put my knot over there, I think. I'm just going to come out on the edge of the wing, wrap like a normal French knot. Instead of down in the same point, you choose where you want your knot to sit. Now the quite good thing with this is you can actually see beforehand. Quite like that there. Tension on it pull it tight. I'm just going to work around the wing, putting some knots in. Wrap first, then choose where you want that to sit. Keep the tension on the thread. We start to add some decoration in now. Start to use these stitches other than just for outlines. Make some nice patterns with them. How quick they are, they go in super fast and look really pretty as well. So just finishing my thread off on the other side. Just going to put an extra stitch in there. Okay, so now that I've put my eyelets in here and my pistol stitches in here, I can put my outline around here now and the outline will cover up the ends of the pistol stitches and my little starting and finishing stitches and make a nice shape to the wing. So I'm sort of building up from the back towards the front. And I'm going to put a stem stitch for this outline. So I don't want something as thick as the chain stitch. I want something a little bit more delicate. So I shall use the stem, which is the one we did around the bottom here. I'm going to start right in the tip. Make sure that you cover any stitches now and any ends. So just take a little bit of care to place these in the right place. This is a dark colour as well, so it's going to show up really easily. There's a stitch there, look, so just make sure that I really do cover that stitch. Nearly back to the start. Just make sure that meets up in a nice point. I'm share that point there. I can finish that thread back in the middle. Like 
like so. And that finishes the edge to my eyelets and my pistol stitches really nicely. Okay, so I finished the first half, so we've done all the five stitches on this first half here. So I'm going to go and stitch the same on the other side and then I'll come back and show you how to finish it off. So this is the simple version finished, so you can leave it there if you want and then come and put the body in just to finish it off. Or if you're um, enjoying these stitches and you want to take it a little bit further, you could use more of the same stitches and keep going and put some more detail in before you put the body in. So I'm just going to do a little bit of that now and then I'll show you what it looks like. I've just added in a few little extra stitches just to show what you can do with it. So I've put some little French knots here in the upper wings. Um, I've gone around this lower eye in the pink because I just felt the pink needed to come down into here a little bit. And just to finish it, two little um, detached chain stitches in the lower wings. So I'm going to now show you the body and how to finish that off. So I'm going to do some more eyelets in the main part here and I'm actually going to mix my colours a little bit now. So once you've got the hang of the stitches you can start to think about how do you put your colours together. So I'm going to do the eyelets like I did in the upper wings in this light purple first. Now again this will have an outline around it so don't worry too much about the edge. So I'm going to go over that. Just going to do a little one over here. I'm going to leave a couple of spaces in this one, so I'm not putting quite as many stitches in. I'm just going to park that one on the top just in case I feel I want to come in and put some more in, in that colour. Going to come in with the dark purple now. Doing exactly the same stitch, the stitch is no different to that which you've already done. So I'm just going to add in a few extra stitches to this one I've done just to start blending my colours together a little bit. Let's add some more to this one. The dark colours are strong colour, so you may just want to adjust by adding a few more lights, but we'll have a look at the end. And I'm going to go to the top now with the dark. And I'm going to make this a little bit more dense. them over a little bit. I think it needs another one up there. Let's park that one, come back in with this one. And I think we'll just add a couple more in. You can just fill it in a plain colour if you want to. This is just taking it a tiny bit further, but I just want to fill it in in one colour, that's absolutely fine. And then one more over there, 
And then we'll call that done. I think I'm actually going to outline it in that purple, so I'm going to leave that one there and park that one out the way up there. So cut my starting knots off. So I'm going to use this one again up here, so I'm actually going to leave that one ready to stitch with and just come around here with a stem stitch. So my loops to the outside of the shape, making sure now that I cover up all of those little starting stitches. There's quite a few now, so just take care to cover all of those up and up to the top just about have enough thread there we go and that's the outline let's get rid of that one we finished with that to fill in with this one. So French knots for this one, back to our French knots, dark colour and I'm just going to fill this in really solidly like we did down here for the wings, give them a nice solid body so that everything is connected to so just to balance the design out. I'm not going to worry about putting an outline around this. I'm going to take my French knots right to the edge. Let's give them a bit of texture. And just fill in this whole shape. Okay, so on the last little bits now, um, just the eyes to go and then just this bit that the eyes are attached to. So I'm just going to change colour just to give it a little bit of definition, otherwise it all blends in. So a few more French knots around here. So I think I'm happy with that. We oh, might just squeeze another one in there, just trying to get them to look the same. Oh, very similar anyway. Yeah, happy with that. So we'll finish that there. It's a little gap there, I can finish that one in and call that done. Right, don't forget to cut that little knot off too where I started my thread. And I think he's finished. So a simple butterfly in five easy embroidery stitches and there's only one thing left to do and I think that's to go and try it on. So this is what the finished embroidery looks like quite pleased with that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this set of videos and are inspired to have a go and if you do have a go do let me know how you get on, leave me a comment below, um, I'd love to, to hear how you get on with that. And if you want to have a go at some more embroidery, we've got loads of videos to help you out over here, check out the beginners embroidery playlist, lots of stuff in there that you'll find really useful. Um, don't forget to check out the website as well um, for the free pattern and um, for lots of other things on there too and subscribe to the YouTube channel to see more videos um, and click the little bell to get notifications of when we upload something new. So hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.